Just right, so I collide with the vision. You trying to pray to God, but we tied the religion. No savior saving, we got to save our savings. We used to pay miss, how we gon' make the slave rich? But who's to blame and tell me why you complaining? We need a team effort just to rule the nation. Like a bad relationship, missing communication. We missing moderation. They trying to get a poison to my population. No reparations, I'm getting tired of saving. We are oppressed. Queen. I'm getting tired of waiting. Queen. We are denied not only civil rights but even human rights. Alma Dyer. Well, the only way we're going to get some of this Alma Dyer. oppression and exploitation. Queen. Shut 
Thanks for tuning back in once again to the Queen Amadai Shakur TV show. I'm your host, Queen Amadai Shakur, and this is your morning wake-up call. So as you're coming in, please feel free to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't done so already, be sure to click the notification bell and click the word all so you're notified each time the Queen Goddess goes live. All right, so let's get into it. First of all, get those likes up. Please also don't forget to double check and make sure that you're still subscribed to this channel, especially if you have not been receiving your notifications. OK, this is something that's commonly done. People become mysteriously unsubscribed. All right. So please do your due diligence. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Dr. Underscore A. Shakur, TikTok at Dr. A. Shakur and Twitter at the Goddess 27. And also, as per usual, if you don't like what the queen is cooking, you already know what to do. Exit stage left. Don't let the virtual door not hit you. OK. Uh, essential oil queen said bring it queen all right you know i will thank you beloved for your kind and generous donation of peace love and blessings to you all right so let's see who's up in here we got essential oil queen of course courtney j reggie all right desmond shout out to the moderators putting in work deronda stacy but course dc juju b is here all right pearly all right reggie says shout out to the moderators for letting the trolls live Okay, Aboriginal woman, Stacy is here. All right, let's get ready to get into it, Deronda. Okay, with that all being said, everyone, please get those likes up. Please like and share. Thank you all in advance. All right. Uh, so, hey, Cherokee descended Dale, Moon Faye, Priscilla, Aboriginal woman, Claudette. Let's get into it. First of all, let's talk about y'all's president. Let's talk about you all's president, Mr. Biden. Biden repeats lie about being the first in his family to go to college. Now, this is decades after he already admitted that it wasn't true. Now, like Cat Williams says, I don't know why liars lie, okay? Please pay attention. Now, he already confessed that this was a lie a while ago. But see, this goes to go back to his mental capacity. Biden's not in his right mind. I'm serious, okay? I really don't think that he is. Now, he doesn't remember that he already told on himself, <clears throat> excuse me, that he lied about all of this. Uh, but I digress. President Biden has repeated a lie that he was the first person in his family to attend college more than three decades after first admitting that it was not true. The oldest ever president re uh, repeated the untruth claim while touting his efforts to bail out student loan borrowers uh, during a stop on Monday at a college in the swing state of Wisconsin. So not only did he lie, this lie was absolutely unnecessary. He didn't even have to tell this lie. Nobody asked him for it. But you know what they say, a lie don't care who tells it, okay? Long as it gets told, please pay attention. He says, I, like an awful lot of people in this audience, was the first in my family to go to college and watch my dad struggle to get there. Uh, Biden, who's 81, has been called out several times uh, before for making this claim. He acknowledged it was untrue more than 35 years ago uh, when his 1987 presidential campaign unraveled in a plagiarism scandal. Y'all didn't know about that, did y'all? Biden sexuals. Y'all had no idea. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Please pay attention. In a plagiarism scandal that saw him lift remarks from a British politician. For those of you who've been following me, 
from 2020 until now. You should remember that I showed that video, okay? But let me continue. I mean, he literally repeated what somebody else said, and it was all lies on his behalf. Now, the person who initially said it was likely telling the truth. That was his story of his life. But Biden just lifted the same talking points and just did it. And that's what happens when you copy other people. Okay, it pays to be original. Biden told a story that didn't even pertain to him. Please pay attention. Now, confronted about plagiarism, plagiarism and a number of inaccurate elements or in statements at the time, Biden acknowledged to the New York Times in 1987, that they are Finnegan's, okay? My mother's family, they went to college. Biden's father also attended the prestigious John Hopkins University for one year, according to the New York Daily Record in 2020. Now, it goes on to say, citing census records, uh, this is how they found out the information. And a 1941 wedding announcement in the Scanton Tribune said the president's dad attended John Hopkins University. Biden has also spoken lovingly of his maternal grandfather, Ambrose Joseph Finnegan, calling him an all-American football player uh, from Santa Clara College in California in a 2022 speech. See, this is what happens when you lie, especially when you tell unnecessary lies. You tend to get confused and forget that you lied about certain things because, in fact, the things were so insignificant that you didn't even need to lie, but you just did because maybe you're a compulsive liar, Mr. Biden. And so that's why he seems to have forgotten and has, in fact, contradicted himself on a myriad of occasions. Now, an, obit an obituary for his grandfather also acknowledged his in, uh, enrollment in Santa Clara College after graduating from high school in Scanton, Pennsylvania. A star athlete, he gained nationwide recognition for his feats while quarterback of the Santa Clara football team. Uh, the obituary goes on to note that Finnegan graduated from the college and took a job in the real estate industry. Even so, Biden has more than once made the claim, that same claim about being the first member of his, of his family to go to college, including during a CNN town hall when he was running for president in 2020. So just lying, trying to sound forlorn and downtrodden as if he had to struggle like the rest of us. This is what I want you to pay attention to. Now he sat there and said that he went to college first in his family and his father, he watched his father struggle as he did so. His father didn't struggle and neither did he. Biden didn't grow up in a struggle. See, this is the thing. A lot of these rich and famous people love to try to sit there and lie and act like they had some downtrodden, hard knock life. Okay, hoping that the rest of us will have empathy for them and then feel more closely to them because we'll feel like, hey, they can represent me. They know my struggles. They've experienced, no. Just like Oprah sitting up there lying about having two cockroaches as pets, not being able to get new dresses, sounding forlorn like the life was such a struggle when her family says collectively that it was anything but. Now here goes Biden talking about he's the first in his family. Uh, anyway. Now, it goes on to say, even so, Biden has more than once made the same claim about the, being the first family member of his family to go to college, including during a CNN town hall uh, when he was running for president in 2020, according to the Washington Times. Uh, Biden resurrected that old lie, okay? Uh, that's what the Trump campaign said at the time. Now, Republicans were quick to point to the inconsistencies after Biden made his remarks in Wisconsin on Monday with Greg Price, communications director for the State Freedom Caucus Network, blasting the president on, on X for lying. Uh, Tim Murtaugh, a columnist of the Washington Times, also wrote that it's sad uh, that it has to be pointed out that Biden cannot be the first in his family to attend college. Okay, he cannot, while also having a grandfather who played college football. So how is he the first? In a statement to the Post, the spokesperson, a uh, spokesman for the White House, said the president is proud to be the first Biden to graduate college. Well, now here's the thing. So now they say graduate college. Now, there is a difference in being the first person to go to college as opposed to being the first one to graduate. Because maybe you were the first one that went and you just never graduated. They did say his father or grandfather didn't graduate. So I don't know. Biden's still lying, clearly. 
Okay, now they're trying to change it. No, he didn't say he was the first one in the family to go to college. He had said he was the first one in the family to graduate. Okay, whatever lie you want to tell Biden's fine with me. I mean, because I don't put any stake in anything he says anyway. In fact, I think that most of what he says is lies. And how do I know? Well, when he opens his mouth and moves his lips. But hey, that's just me. So what do you all think about it all? Do you all think your president sitting up here lying just for the hell of it? Because that's what it sounds like. Sounds like Biden's just lying for the hell of it. Doesn't even have a good reason to be sitting up here lying. Just because he can. All right. And then, like I said, forgetting that he's already told us the truth. Mm, mm, mm. But of course, DC said if they ain't uh, had sardines and pork and beans for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, they don't know a struggle. Well, you know, beloved, if that's the case, judging by what you just said, but of course, DC, I don't know the struggle either. Because what I have never eaten is sardines and pork and beans, especially for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Honey, do you have gas? Are you okay? Uh, wink twice if you need me to call EMS. Okay, EMS. <laughs> if you need me to call an EMT, okay, please let me know. <laughs> Terry Hinn said, why are they mayo explaining? Miss J said, if his lips are moving, he's lying. Terry Hinn said, word salad. <laughs> oh, that crazy bitch Aaron said, I cannot. Okay. <laughs> oh, hold on. Uh, Easy said, Biden admit to your Grand Wizard membership. You and Mr. Beard, Mr. Bird were true Dixiecrats. <laughs> okay. I absolutely cannot. Hold on. Speaking of wizard, speaking of wizard, I got to show y'all something. I got to show y'all something. How many of you once in the chat? I meant to tell you all this yesterday because I might be behind. I just found this out this week. But once in the chat, how many of you know, speaking of wizards, this just jogged my memory. How many of you know that you can do a Harry Potter spell on your iPhone? Once in the chat. Once in the chat, if you know that you can do a Harry Potter spell on your iPhone. Everybody's putting tools. I'm going to show you all a trick. Okay, I'm going to show you all a trick. Everybody's putting twos. <laughs> Perplex says, say what now? Yeah, I want you all to watch this. Hold on. Now I want you all to watch this. Hold on. Siri. Uh, -huh. uh Lumos Siri. Siri Lumos. Siri Knox. Siri Osio TikTok. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? Hold on. Needed to make sure I said I seen it on TikTok. Let me tell you all something. I'm sitting up here doing spells from Harry Potter. Now, Watch this. I'm going to do it again because I'm going to tell you all what I'm doing. You know, in the movie Harry Potter, when they say Lumos, the lantern comes on. So if you say Siri, Lumos, the flashlight comes on. Now, when you want to turn it off, you say Siri, Knox. Siri, Knox. Now, if you want to open an app, you say Siri, ICO TikTok. And it opens the app that you asked for. Okay, I'm a whole witch. I just want y'all to pay attention. I'm casting spells. <laughs> this is all nefarious. This is all nefarious. I just want y'all to pay attention. Reggie said, I've seen it in movies. Honey, I've seen it in movies, but not in real life. Okay? <laughs> that crazy bitch Eric said, fraud today. <laughs> now I'm going to have a spell casting webinar, like we. <laughs> Terry said, I rebuke the devil. 
Tasty Cake said, I just tried it too, LOL. Okay, I'll tell you, this is all crazy. <laughs> oh, Easy said, I have an iPhone, but I'm not inviting that sorcery into my space. <laughs> oh, let me tell you something, beloved. I have, a, I have a, something to tell you. When it comes to sorcery, you don't have to invite it into your space, beloved. It's already in our space every day. From the stuff that we watch on the tell lie vision that tells lies to the vision. You don't think they're doing sorcery when we're watching that stuff? You don't think that they're doing sorcery when we're listening to music from the music industry? Yeah, it's already sorcery. It's all around us. We cast spells with words every day. For those of you who missed that video I did about words have power on the spiritual channel, please be sure to watch it. Okay, you don't have to be a member. Anyone can watch it. But we literally cast spells every day with words, beloved. The sorcery is already here. Have you ever taken medication? Did you ever take something that maybe you had a, a, a sore throat, strep throat? You had any type of illness. Did you take medicine? If you took medicine, you already invited in the sorcery. Uh, the medicine comes from a pharmaceutical company. Okay, they sell it at a pharmacy. Uh, the root word of pharmacy or pharmaceutical is pharmaca, which basically means sorcery, beloved. All right. You already invited it in. We can't help ourselves. It's all around us. Look all around you. Even if you watch movies from Hollywood, Hollywood is full of sorcery. The word Hollywood comes from the holly tree. They took the wood, the wizards that built Hollywood, took the wood from the holly tree and fashioned it into wands to cast these spells. And that's where the name Hollywood comes from. So it's full of witchcraft and sorcery, beloved. So if you're watching movies, you're watching TV, period, you're listening to music, okay? You're doing any of those things. you even talking. You're casting spells. I just want y'all to pay attention. I just want y'all to pay attention. But let me continue. Let me continue. Ha! So with that all being said, like up, everyone. Please like and share. Now, listen to this. Donald Trump did this, they say. They're going to blame this on Donald Trump. Said a new Biden abortion ad features a woman who says she almost died because of a Texas ban. The ad was released hours after Trump said he believes abortion laws should be left to the states, sidestepping the national ban uh, some of his supporters want. Okay, so let's just go ahead and show the ad. They're showing this on the news report. Hold on. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. I'm going to put an overlay over this as not to have any copyright issues. Please pay attention. Let's put an overlay on there real quick. Likes up, everyone. <clears throat> Excuse me. Please like and share. Thank you in advance. dodging a national abortion ban now by saying that states should decide the issue. He's been really all over this lot, all over the lot on this issue. And MSNBC is getting a look at a first look at a new Biden campaign ad. Here it is. This is one of our willow boxes. This is just filled with some of the things that we had started gathering for her while I was pregnant. Yep. Here's her little baby book. the outfit that she was gonna maybe wear home from the hospital. All of these. Um, this is the blanket that she was in. powerful and emotional but Tim you also have Mike Pence uh, from the other point of view tweeting that Trump's retreat today is a slap in the face to abortion opponents and Trump in, social, in his truth social also made a, a point that he's concerned about the politics of abortion not 
you know, the morality of the issue, but how it's playing politically and how it's bad for his campaign. Yeah, well, Trump doesn't care about anybody but himself. So whether you're a genuine pro-lifer like Mike Pence, um, or whether you're genuinely concerned about the rights of women's being infringed upon, uh, you're going to be on opposite sides of Donald Trump because he's not genuinely concerned about anything. So I I'm skeptical that Mike Pence, like that there's going to be a ton of voters who follow Mike Pence's point of view, maybe some on the margins. I think a lot of those voters have already made the deal with the devil, so to speak, with Trump, got what they wanted as far as Roe v. Wade being overturned. Um, and so, I, and a lot of those folks have become very defensive and aligned with Donald Trump, speaking of, you know, evangelical voters over the past eight years. So I, I'm happy to see Mike Pence speaking up for his convictions. I don't know how many voters that reflects. The Biden ad, on the other hand, I think is pretty strong. And, and I like that it features a woman, obviously very powerful and a moving ad, but features a woman that wanted to have kids, right? And that pushes back against this notion that, um, you know, that you get from some on the, the, the Trump tried to put forth. It's the Democrats that are real extremists and they want to do post-birth abortion and, and this kind of nonsense. They're featuring ads for women that are really suffering, wanted to have babies, are unable to have medical procedures because of laws that are being passed in red states. I think that's a powerful place for, for the Biden campaign to be to reach gettable voters on this yeah. issue. He's joining me now. NBC's Hala Garani in Tel Aviv and Noga Tarnalov, excuse me, Tarnopolsky. Noga Tarnopolsky, an independent journalist based in Jerusalem, has great insights into all of this. Noga's latest article in New York Magazine is titled, Israelis are hostages at Netanyahu. Hala, what else do we know about the hostage negotiations? So it's interesting because we're hearing conflicting reports. On the one hand, Egyptian media is quoting participants as saying, I forgot my mic was muted. <laughs> Thank you, Priscilla, for your super sticker. Okay, donation. Peace, love, and blessings to you, beloved. Uh, so what I was saying was uh, that basically they're blaming that on Trump. I mean, the propaganda is real crazy. That lady seemed like she was acting to me. Those seemed like crocodile tears. Maybe they were real. I don't know. But at the end of the day, how was that uh, Trump's fault? Priscilla said, love the artwork, Queen. Thank you, beloved. Thank all of you for saying you like that. Okay, the Prince of Paraphernalia said he's staying positive. Okay, I just find it all interesting. Like, you know, I don't believe in abortion, quite frankly. Um, and we know why they're doing all of this because birth rate numbers are down and death rate numbers are up, specifically due to opioids and things of that nature. So they don't want people who look like her uh, to be having abortions. But meanwhile, it's okay to put all those clinics in our neighborhoods like they had, have done for decades. Okay, please pay attention. With that all been said, everyone, please get the likes up. Please like and share. Thank you in advance. Okay, now let's talk about this black woman. This black woman has a black owned bookstore um, and she's been forced to close down because she's been receiving death threats. Now, this is something that's very common. This has happened throughout the history of the United States. In fact, most of the race wars that we've had in this country were all due to people who were racist hating on black business owners. This has been something that has continued to be an issue, okay? Now, this one was minding her own business. You know, what they did to her is nothing different than what they did to the people that owned the turkey leg hut, okay, in Houston. Remember how I told you all they were trying to give them all this trouble and they got together a group of them and paid off some raccoons who look like me uh, to basically complain about the smoke and say it was toxic because they were smoking their turkey wings or turkey legs and all of that trying to get these people shut down. They literally put all their money, pulled their money together, got an attorney and got these people, tried to get these people a restraining order so they couldn't even go in their own restaurant. Had someone else pretend to be a, a what do you call it? The uh, Department of Health to come in there and check and all of that stuff, just being nefarious. Now this woman says that they've tried to threaten her up out of her business. So let's talk about it. Likes up everyone, please like and share. Thank you in advance. 
Black-owned children's bookstore in Raleigh moving after threats, according to the owner. Okay, this is all crazy. Liberation Station Bookstore, North Carolina's first Black-owned children's bookstore, is moving out of downtown Raleigh, okay, less than a year after it opened. Liberation Station opened on Juneteenth of 2023 at 208 Fayetteville Street on the second floor of the Efforts Building. Now, the bright, intimate space hosts events with uh, hosts events and sells children's books written and illustrated by Black and underrepresented authors and illustrators. So, unfortunately, we live in a country uh, that has given permission to the nameless and faceless people to make threats and cause harm, emotional harm. This is what the owner, Victoria Miller, said. Okay, so let's just go to the video. <clears throat> I find this also deplorable. This is still going on in 2024. But, you know, you have people like Candace Owens who wants to act like, you know, the rest of us are just playing the victim in all of these things. I find it all very interesting. Here we go right here. Like stuff, everyone. Please like and share. We have Gordon Parks. Um, Langston Hughes. A curated collection of literature lines the shelves, telling the stories of black children and families. It's not just a bookstore, it's a movement. Victoria Scott Miller opened Liberation Station in downtown Raleigh last June after four years of pop-up book sales from the trunk of the family's car. A 2011 Chevy Cruze, um, going from place to place. A vibrant mural covers the wall leading to the store. Inside, it's a cozy, welcoming space for the children who visit here. Have a seat. Breathe. You are home, reads a message on a bench. This is a community space. It's a communal, sacred space. Scott Miller says that, that peace turned upside down in September. We begin receiving threats um, online and also through the phone. She says at first they brushed off the threats and didn't report them to police. We didn't deserve to have to say, oh, here's another another problem, you know, another issue. Um, that's intruding on the space that you deserve. And, um, and so we, you know, we sat with it as a family and we said, well, what, what do we do? Scott Miller describes the threats as sickening, targeting her store and family. I think it is the power and presence of seeing a black family unit doing this work. And I think that that's the threat. She says it's become exhausting and unsafe to the point that Liberation Station will soon become another vacant space on a street the city's trying to revitalize. How are you revitalizing the city if you're forgetting the people that matter, that are marginalized? That's a... Honey, they wouldn't run me up out of there. I wouldn't be going anywhere. I would just beef up by security, okay? Y'all want to play? Let's get into it, okay? See, that's the problem. That's the problem. They do these foolish things and then people who look like me will pack up and run. Okay, you should not be intimidated by them. Should not let them intimidate you at the end of the day. But this is what they do very successfully in doing so because this often makes the person just get up and leave. And then they'll sit here and act like we don't accomplish anything for ourselves and they have these other people that come from other countries doing better than us. Well, here's what happens. When they see someone, and I still have very much so suspicions about the man who owned the um, who owned that New York restaurant, Jamaican restaurant, Golden Crust. How that man turned up shots, deceased, and they said that it, he did that to himself because he owed one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in taxes allegedly. Yeah, I don't believe that. Why would someone who's a multimillionaire off themselves because they owe one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in taxes? And also, the first report said that he was shot twice. And then later they came back and said it was once. Yeah, I have a whole lot of questions. Okay, He was the number one, had the number one Jamaican restaurant, turns up deceased, okay, at a young age, who had everything going for, for himself, overcame his struggles, and now he wants to take himself out? Yeah, that doesn't make sense. The math isn't mathing. Okay, and then, like I said, you have all of these other issues going on with Black-owned businesses, like the turkey leg hunt. This is all crazy. Queen Sam said, when we pull ourselves up by our bootstraps, they want to take the damn boots. Exactly. This is what happens. I also agree. Just, I just really hate that for her. Okay. I, she goes on to say that uh, on Monday, Scott Miller posted on Instagram that the bookstore will leave its space on April the 30th after receiving numerous threats. Uh, this is what Scott Miller Okay, she's the mother of two boys and said one concerning phone call mentioned her eldest son. Okay, so now they're going in threatening the kids. 
She says, since September, we faced numerous threats following the opening of our store. Some we brushed off while others included a disturbing phone call detailing what our son Langston wore uh, when he was at the shop alone. Scott Miller said that she and her family took a break from operating the store for about two weeks after the threat started. Uh, she operates the store with her husband and 13 year old son. She said, we went away for two weeks just to breathe and process the things, uh, the thing that we had created for good and was now attempting to be destroyed and taken away from us. This is all so sad. Last year, Scott Miller told uh, WRAL News, her children play an active role in deciding what books the store sells. Now, in response to the threat, Scott Miller said she frequently changed her she frequently changed her operating hours. Said we've been strategizing within our means to avoid being targeted. In January, Scott Miller said she brought the threat concerns to the landlords of the building uh, when they started showing the space to potential new tenants. Now, because we're in the business of children, we're responsible for their safety, she said. Uh, Scott Miller also explained why she was initially reluctant to share her concerns. She said, part of the reason why we didn't want to talk about this is because I didn't want to become the face of another movement. I didn't want to become the face of another cause. I wanted to settle into this space with a peace that we all deserve. Scott Miller said that the move does not mean the end of Liberation Station. Uh, she said it certainly won't mark the end of Liberation Station bookstore. There is so much more work to be done. Now, on Tuesday, Scott Miller said the bookstore would remain operational until April the 13th. Afterwards, we will begin our move forward. Any remaining inventory will be donated to literacy nonprofits throughout the triangle. Uh, Scott Miller said the bookstore would go back to the drawing board to assess and redefine what they will need in their next location. Scott Miller described the Liberation Station bookstore. Uh, she said it was everything. It was a sanctuary. It was a home. It was a church. It is your grandmother's dinner table. Before securing its brick and mortar space, Liberation Station hosted pop-up bookstore events across the area. So, like I said, this is all nothing but haters, honey. Why can't they just leave us alone? Then have the nerve to be getting all mad, butthurt, and bothered when people say they want to separate. Oh, here's why. It's reasons like these. It is reasons like these. I find it absolutely egregious. Okay? Absolutely egregious. Like up, everyone. Please like and share. Now, y'all got to hear this. You all have got to hear this. A dad who did not want to pay his ex-wife over $100,000 in child support. Well, he faked his death. Okay, he said, F that. I'm out of here. Think I'm going to give you my hard-earned cash? Uh, Jesse Kipf, age, age 38, now admits that he illegally accessed the Hawaii death registry system. Now, I want you all to pay attention because this is what someone will do in a moment of desperation, clearly. Now, he accessed the Hawaii death registry system in order to create a fake death case for himself, assign that case to himself, and then certify the case with the unauthorized use of a physician's signature. And this man's from Kentucky. So the Kentucky man confessed to making his faking his death so that he would not have to pay over $100,000 in child support to his ex-wife. Okay, so he managed to get access to the death registry where in January 2023, he created a case file for his death, assigned the case to himself and all of that, and then certified the case using credentials of a physician without that individual's knowledge or authorization, according to a plea agreement obtained by Inside Edition Digital. This is also nefarious. And so goes on to say, Hold on. It says a federal grand jury indicted Kip in November of 2023 on five counts of computer fraud, three counts of aggravated identity theft, and two counts of making false statements on application in connection with federally insured financial institutions. Now, he faced a potential sentence 
of over 60 years if convicted on all those charges. But as part of his deal, prosecutors are recommending he served just seven years after agreeing to plead guilty to the count of computer fraud and one count of aggravated identity theft. Why did he should have paid the $100,000 in child support? Now you're going to do six years? Okay, he's going to lose a whole lot more than that in prison. Now his re his uh, re rearrangement is now set for later this week. He will also have to pay $116,357 in restitution to the state of California Child Support Services for those missed support payments, as well as $56,247 to Milestone and $19,653 to Guest Tech for damages caused when he illegally accessed those corporate networks, uh, according to the agreement. On top of that, the judge can impose a fine of up to $250,000 uh, for each of the counts. The exact details of Kip's alleged crimes are unknown beyond the allegation that he attempted to sell stolen data from the website that he illegally accessed because many of the filings have remained under seal since the start of the case last year. Now, Kip agreed uh, to deal just to a deal just two weeks before the start of his federal jury trial in Kentucky. Inside Edition Digital reached out to Kip's attorney, uh, but he, he did not respond to a request for comments. I find this all egregious. How about y'all? He didn't want to pay his child support, so this is what he resorted to, but they want to sit here and talk about black fathers and call them deadbeats. This is him right here. This is him right here. That's the culprit. Okay, that's the one that did it. I find it all so interesting. I find it all so interesting. Like up, everyone, please like and share. Didn't want to pay that child support, so let me just go ahead and fake my little old death here. Act like I didn't, you know. Here's the news report. Husky County, a man admitted to faking his death to avoid paying child support. 39-year-old Jesse Kiff pled guilty to computer fraud and aggravated identity theft. In 2023, he used a computer to access the Hawaii Death Registry System, where he created fake death certificate, a fake death certificate for himself. His plea document says that he did this to avoid paying child support fees. He was initially charged with multiple counts of computer fraud and identity theft but many of those were dropped in the plea deal. Now he owes more than $200,000 to various agencies. He will appear in court in Frankfurt next Friday. And in Madison... Also nefarious, okay? I just want y'all to pay attention. Absolutely nefarious, okay? Now let's listen to Biden talking about these uh, this debt that he's going to forgive. I forgot to play this earlier when I talked about him, uh, so let's get into it. My administration will propose a new rule to cancel up to $20,000 in runaway interest for any borrower that owes more now, owes more now than when they started paying the loan. And for low and middle class families enrolled in my SAVE program, we'll cancel all of your interest, all of your interest. And second, we plan to cancel student debt for borrowers who still owe student loans, even though they started repaying them more than two decades ago. Folks, third, we plan to cancel debt for about two million borrowers who would be eligible for debt forgiveness through the SAVE program, public service loan forgiveness, or other debt canceling program, but are not enrolled in these programs. Fourth, we plan to cancel debt for borrowers who the Department of Education determines were cheated by universities that left students in unaffordable loans and delivered little in benefits to students. And finally, the Department of Education will propose a new rule to cancel student debt for Americans facing financial hardships, from child care to health care. Mm. Okay, y'all heard what he said. Biden, please sit down somewhere, okay? Is that supposed to be our reparations? I have a whole lot of questions. Trying to buy votes, okay? <laughs> it's too late. You have destroyed Right. I mean, at the end of the day, that's exactly what he's doing, in my opinion. So you destroy our country. I agree. They plan to pass a lot of laws. Mm -hmm. Andrew said, forget creepy, creepy, sleepy Joe. We want our reparations. So y'all can stop asking about the reparations. So they're not coming. 
Those reparations are nowhere in sight, honey, nor shall they be. Y'all, not, we're not getting reparations, beloveds. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it's not going to happen. They've clearly let us know that they're not going to ever pay reparations, beloved. They can give all that money to the illegal immigrants, give all that money to people whose atrocities didn't even occur here. $183 million Governor uh, Kathy Hochul just gave away in January. Okay, so people who had something happen to them outside of this country, but they don't have anything for us. It's not happening. I hate to be very bad news. That's just how it is. Now let's talk about Terrence Howard because Terrence Howard gave an interview the other day and he had this fabulous hair on his head. Kind of reminded me of a Charlie's Angel, so to speak. Maybe a little Farrah Fawcett. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to show you the clip. Uh, but at the start of the chat, he was asked why he was wearing such a wig. Uh, to which he replied, this ain't no wig, this is my hair. After laughing off the moment, he explained that it's his character from the series Cadillac Richie. Okay, Fight Night is focused on a robbery that went down during Muhammad Ali's 1970 combat fight in Atlanta. Hence the very 70s getup he's sporting. He he co-stars in the project with Kevin Hart, Don Cheadle, and Samuel L. Jackson. Okay, uh, so what led him to conduct the interview with the wig? Well, that's the question we still all wondering. Uh, that remains unclear and to be seen. Maybe it really is his real hair. Is he becoming a method actor? Well, it could be. Maybe he was always one. And so let's go to it because this hair is fabulous, honey. Don't y'all hate the players? Honey, hate the game. Please, please pay attention. Now, CAA. That's a lot of money. That should have been. Well, let's sit, let's go to another one. I'm just saying. CAA, Creative Artists Agency, they represented me. Mm -hmm. They also represented some of the people from Big Bang Theory. Mm -hmm. They also did the deal with Fox. Mm -hmm. My show was with Fox. The people from Big Bang was with Fox. Mm -hmm. We had 28 million viewers. They had 11 million viewers. Yeah. They were getting $2 million, damn near $3 million an episode, those white kids. They had no name recognition, no Oscar nominations, none of that. We have 28 million viewers, and these these jokers are paying me um, $325,000 an episode. And I'm like, every year, every year I'm asking my agents, what's going on, what's going on? I didn't know that the packaging deal, my agents were incentivized to keep my pay low so they net so they'll go to fox and say no and they'll say no themselves because they were producers they owe me over 120 million dollars based on what would have been what paid have to been. white yeah. counterparts yeah. so now i'm in the process of suing them mm -hmm. about it and they when i asked them about it about my money they sent me a check for 666 dollars Six, wait, six hundred and sixty-six dollars to say wait, six hundred and sixty-six dollars exactly. What? Not saying where it's from. So I was like, oh, you y'all trying to y'all trying to threaten me? This Look, is a market this, piece. No, this trying. is a threat. This is that's a threat right, right here. And y'all wow. think y'all think I'm that's scared? Insulting. You think I'm gonna be quiet about this? Because I wonder what you're doing to every other black yeah. artist. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you know how do you of... how do you negotiate two million dollars for a, for a white cat and negotiate three hundred and twenty five thousand for a black cat that has three times what the white cat is getting? They were getting seven hundred fifty thousand um, dollars for a thirty minute spot, thirty second spot what? for advertisement. That's that's what you get for bigger sometimes than the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. and they were getting that every week. Wow. from us but they were incentivized and that's why packaging deals were mm. illegal but now i'm waiting to go to court now to deal with caa concerning that stuff and they're like oh don't you want to work in a business no i want my money so i don't have to work that's the whole point of working i wanted to retire so i can do what i got to do oh so my god this, so this is this is important this to is know going on, yeah, yeah because you know i mean you know i know you've heard i had to get back on the stroll that she needs to get an award because how she was able to keep a straight face and maintain her composure and professionalism while he's sitting there with all that hair upon his head looking like Farrah Fawcett from Charlie's Angels, I have to say that she deserves an Oscar for that performance, quite frankly. Now, y'all know I love me some Terrence Howard, but I'm sorry. He was sitting up there looking just like Eva Marcel. 
Y'all know even Marcel and Terrence Howard look just alike. Is she sure that's not her daddy? Terrence Howard, I cannot take you serious with all that hair up on your head. And y'all sitting there calling it a wig. He said that's not no darn wig. That man said that's his hair. Okay? He said that's his hair. And in case you missed it, he's getting ready for a roll. Now, why he chose to come up on that interview and sit there dressed in full-on uh, attire from the film with his hair done like that to boot is beyond me. Okay, it's beyond me. That hairdo was given Lenny from Good Times. Okay, y'all remember Lenny from Good Times? Always selling something out of his coat. It's given that. How did James Brown have anything on him? Please pay attention. Witty T said he was trolling. I thought he was at first, honey, but he was very serious when he was talking, so I don't know. But that hair took me out, okay? <laughs> Miss Mississippi said, was that an old interview? No, that's not an old interview, honey. That's a new interview. That's a new interview. I just want you all to pay attention. Uh, but I find it also interesting. But let me continue. Likes up, everyone, please like and share. Now, I'm going to share this next story with you guys. It's a story that's been going around on the internet, but now uh, they're saying that it's not true. It's all conspiracy theories and that somebody's lying. Now, Tizzy ENT comes out and debunks the story, so to speak, uh, by saying the stuff that they said actually occurred. Now, I'm not sure what I believe, but if it has something to do with Mitch McConnell, yeah. I pretty much believe whatever they say about him. Uh, so let's get into it. Like, up, everyone. Please like and share. Uh, thank you in advance. Here we go. Just pop it on real quick so you don't immediately scroll. Uh, several people sent me this video. Everyone should know this, okay? So the shipping container here that just took down the bridge in Baltimore, okay? So this is uh, Angela Cheo, who just so happens to be Mitch McConnell's sister in law. She is the CEO of the shipping uh, company that that ship was connected to. Um, but it just so happened six days ago, this girl died. This is what happened. She was driving her Tesla when it went into reverse on its own into a pond where she drowned. Okay, tell me that's not a coincidence, y'all. Okay, they just took her out and then all of a sudden, five, six days later, here comes down the bridge. So just a little shady, but I thought the world should know. Okay, the short story here is that's all bullshit. The longer story is, this is a great example of how easily misinformation just spreads. Because this was sent to me, not because that guy posted it necessarily. He posted it, he only has about 10,000 followers on TikTok. But then this Instagram page saw it and picked it up and posted it to their 1.2 million. And then actor singer Tyrese saw their post and went, oh, this is interesting. And he reposted it to his more than 20 million followers. And it was several of those who messaged me saying, is this real? No, it is not. And even before this article came out saying, hey, there's a story going around, it's not true, you still could have gotten a good clue that it was fake if you'd done a little searching. For example, Angela Cho, the woman who he's speaking of, didn't die six days ago. She died on February 10th. Just the results of her autopsy came up about a week ago. Her blood alcohol level was more than three times the legal limit when she backed her Tesla into a pond. She was even on a phone call with a friend and drunkenly like apologizing as water filled up the car. Too drunk it seems to get herself out. There is no indication the car drove itself into the pond. Although that is a conspiracy theory that was running around when she first died back on February 10th. That, oh no, Mitch McConnell must have hatched a diabolical plan. No, it seems that she drove herself into the pond because she was inebriated. Furthermore, while she was the CEO of a shipping company, she is not the CEO of the shipping company 
that was involved in this. She had no relation to them whatsoever. Now, this may not seem like that big a deal, but the reality is there have been a bunch of really hateful conspiracy theories that have come out surrounding this accident, ones that I'm sure Tyrese would not want to platform. For example, there's a whole claim that this accident was caused because of diversity and inclusion hires, despite the fact that people have no idea who the people were that were running this, what their race was, what their work history was, but they're willing to say that with their whole chest. There's also a bunch of people who've just been bold-faced, outright racist on Twitter because the mayor of Baltimore is black insinuating that he is somehow lesser than, because he's black, that he himself is a diversity hire, and that because of that, this is somehow his fault. Conspiracies like this one beget and reinforce ones like that. So all I'm saying is before we share posts like this, before we run from some random uh, backwards hat-wearing dude on TikTok and go like, wow, did you hear this? This is all strange. Because the article he's showing behind his head doesn't support any of the claims he's making. Before we do that, just do a little research. Let's use a little critical thinking and let's not be so quick to share what could be harmful misinformation. Okay, so what do you all think? Let me turn this music down some. I turned it up to try to cover up that music they were playing in case it was copyrighted. Now, with that all been said, what do you all think? Do you all think it's plausible? The only thing that I could see that was a that was accurate is that she died in February. Okay? At the end of the day, you never know what these people are doing, honey. I don't put anything past them. Who and where is the friend that she was talking to on the phone before it ended up in the pond? How does he know she was talking to someone on the phone? Thank you. That's what I'd like to know. That's what I'd like to know. Is he going by what they've reported? Because just because they reported something happened a specific way doesn't necessarily mean that that it's true. Okay, I have a whole lot of questions when certain things happen with these politicians, just like when Barack Obama and Michelle Obama's chef ended up dead, having drowned. Now, the interesting thing about that is because this man is supposed to be a good swimmer. There is actually footage of him swimming like a fish. Okay? So, this is all nefarious. At the end of the day, I don't put anything past Mitch McConnell. Truth over everything said, you can't open a flooded Tesla because it's electric. Okay, the windows will, won't open unless you roll them down before losing power. Okay, now see, I didn't know that because I've never driven a Tesla. That's very interesting. Sounds like lying, though. Sounds like lying. Okay, and here's the thing. Like I told you all before, whenever they say something's a conspiracy theory, it to me usually is always true. Okay, that's just my opinion. Usually when they say something is a conspiracy theory, it usually tends to have elements of truth to it. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Now, Tizzy, I don't know if you're right or the people that believe the story is right at the end of the day. But I find it very interesting that his uh, daughter-in-law, nonetheless, or whoever she is to him, basically has something to do with a shipping company, even if it's not that same one. Yeah, that's a bit more than a coincidence to me. I'm sorry. This all sounds very strange. All sounds very strange. With that all been said, let me get up out of here. I have one more video for you all. One more video for you all. And this is uh, Benny Siegel. Now, Benny Siegel was talking, and they asked him about the Diddy debacle. And here's what he had to say. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. Thank you in advance. Make sure I'm pulling up the right one. Hold on. I don't know which one of these videos it is. I may pull up the wrong one. Hold on. Let's see here. Oh, I know what I wanted to show you all first. There's a video of this young lady who was talking about the moon yesterday with the solar eclipse and all of that and talking about some very strange things and she feels like the moon is evil. You all watch this video and tell me what you think. And then we'll go to Betty Siegel. Y'all, this moon, it just keep getting stranger and stranger. Look at how low this shit was sitting last night. So the moon damn near on the street tonight. 
that thing low low <laughs> And if you've been watching my previous videos, you already know how I feel about the moon. Return to sender, because we don't want to hear no more. But let me just show y'all why I feel like that about the moon. I'm not just feeling like that for no reason. I told y'all it's evil. And y'all know I got to make it make sense by breaking down the word. So let's go. So lunatic, the meaning from the late 13th century is affected with periodic insanity dependent on the changes of the moon. From old French lunatique, insane or directly from Latin, lunaticus, moonstruck. And then if we jump on down, you can see lunatic, literally moon sick. So y'all still non-believers that the moon is just so peaceful and serene? Yeah, okay. No, what's peaceful and serene is the darkness. Remember, the darkness in which we come from. That is what's peaceful. If that moon was to leave today, we would still feel peace in the nighttime. Actually, we probably would feel a whole lot more peace because like I said, that moon is evil as hell. The body is made up of 70% water. What effect does the moon have on the tides in the oceans? Now, if your body is 70% water, don't you think that it's going to have the same impact on you? And I'm not here to debate whether it's hollow or None of it. I don't give a damn if it's hollow, if it's plasma, if it, whatever it is, it need to get the hell up out of here. Like I said before, it's a base where different beings live and there are buildings and shit like that on the other side of the moon. Definitely. And if it's not, why do we see this? Take a look at this black object flying through the moon. Did you catch that? Let's zoom in and take another look. Something is flying through the moon, guys. The moon is not what we're being told. In all reality, though, it does look like somebody or something is trying to get that moon the hell up out of here, and I'm all for it. Y'all take a look at this last clip. It's out, right? This is something nobody is talking about, man. What actually happened on the moon? Something crashed to the moon, and nobody is speaking about this. This happened March the 4th, this year. Look at that. But the moon is out of space. You see what I'm saying? How could you see something so clear and vivid if the moon is out of space? Whatever hit the moon, it penetrated it. You know what I'm saying? But nobody's talking about this. Okay, I'm gonna leave it alone for now. I'm gonna leave the moon alone because I feel like we've been talking about the moon for a few videos now. But I just wanted to elaborate for the people in the comments in the previous videos who said, oh, the moon is so peaceful, it's not negative. Well, maybe that's the case for you. However, for me, my eyes open. But peace, love, and light to you all. And if you enjoy all things deep thought, give your girl a like, comment, and follow. Appreciate y'all for watching. I'm calling BS. I'm calling BS. I don't think the moon is evil at all. Okay? And the energy that comes from the moon, I think that it basically just makes the energy that the person has, their own energy more pronounced. Okay? Like the story of the werewolf. You know, they say at the full moon, that's when a person turns to a werewolf. Well, I think that's just like a, a parable for someone who's nefarious and wicked, okay, being affected by the moon's energy. All right, so I find it all interesting. But here's the thing. She said something, they showed something crashed into the moon. Well, that was in 2022, and here's how they explained that. Rogue rocket that slammed into the moon last year confirmed to be Chinese vehicle. It was part of the Long March 3C that launched the Chang's 5T1 mat mission in 2014, according to a study. Now, the case of the mysterious moon crash is now conclusively closed. They say on March the 4th of 2022, a rocket body slammed into the moon's far side, blasting out a weird double crater about 95 feet or 29 meters wide. The crash did not come as a surprise. Uh, astronomers had been tracking the rogue rocket for weeks and predicted with impressive accuracy where and when it would slam into the lunar surface. 
Now, the mystery involved the identity of the impactor, which astronomers designed, uh, I'm sorry, designated WE0913A. Initial observations suggested it might be the upper stage of the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket uh, that launched from Earth or launched the Earth, observing uh, the DSCOVR satellite in February of 2015. Uh, so basically, they said it was a rogue rocket. That's all I'm saying. That's how they explain that. She's saying all that stuff about the moon. Yeah, I don't believe it. Okay, I absolutely do not believe it. And a matter of fact, it doesn't even really make sense as far as I'm concerned. Okay, tethers, uh, tethers or tribunal says, or, or tethers or tribal says, an extraterrestrial would call BS <laughs> when earthlings figure them out. <laughs> they just might. At the end of the day, I'm giving her a whole side eye, okay? In fact, this is how I'm looking at her. Please pay attention. <laughs> Whose child is that? child is that that little girl is too grown let me show that again honey because it's the eye roll for me <laughs> i absolutely cannot i absolutely cannot that little girl is too grown okay She's looking at her like, yitch, please, okay? <laughs> oh, I believe she said, not the side eye queen. Yes, absolutely, okay? That's how I'm looking at her for saying that foolishness. With that all being said, everyone, please like and share this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, okay? And don't forget to double check and make sure you're still subscribed if you have not been receiving notifications, okay? Each one, teach one. That's how we grow and thrive. Do something productive, constructive, but never destructive. And always remember, beloveds, to keep the most high first in your lives. And for those of you who follow the spiritual channel, I will be going live on there at about 6 and 6.30, between 6 and 6.30, like I told you. Uh, so please stay tuned for your no notifications. All right. Until next time, beloveds, I will talk to you all again soon. Skin. God all in my blood Kings all in my circle You touch one of mine and you're done They show no love for the queen Why you hating on me? Is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans? I got dreams like King Luther Shed blood like Kusa You ain't helping my people I ain't got nothing to say to ya I want all the smoke like hookah Talking reparations America won't be great until they give us compensation I'm like, uh I'm the hottest right now That's See right. a bunch of lames out here trying to jock on my style They be doing too much I'm the queen, it's too easy It's like they all at Popeyes How they be talking so greasy Real I just sit back and laugh While these haters get madder So nefarious how they don't want my pockets with chatter I tell them they can do better These snakes in the grass Can leave a bite on your ass Cause y'all be trusting too fast I got my foot on the gas other one on they necks Dropping receipts on haters You better show some respect I'm never facing regrets We only facing the threats Running through every challenge Like a relay break, no sweat It's a cold game So I got that blanket with me Now that my people awaken Ain't no going to sleep I do not play by my peace This time I'm playing for keeps You talking slick But when I see you like them ends We gon' meet And now I got gold all in my skin in my blood. my blood, kings all in my circle. You touch one of mine and you done. They show no love for the queen. Why they hating on me? Is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans and I got gold all in my skin? God all in my blood, kings all in my circle. You touch one of mine and you done. They show no love for the queen. Why they hating on me? Is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans and I got.